Is everyone okay in English? Yes. <laughs> Hearing him speak Tamil, I wondered. <coughs> huh? Connector. Oh, I didn't bring the. You want the connector? Oh. <laughs> should I, should I it's upstairs on the. Should be on the table, yeah. Okay. Man again? Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, I forgot the connection. Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Jana Bala Bakiri Gopi Jana Bala Bakiri Bharatahari Yashodanandana prachajana ranjana Yashodanandana prachajana ranjana Yamuna tiravana Yamuna tiravana Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Okay, Hare Krishna.
anyhow. Okay. Yeah. To make it full screen, is it? Yeah. Okay. Just, I think yeah. That's it, right? Right. Okay. I don't know if any of you ever heard about uh, the Bhakti Shastri course. Did you ever do that? Any of you ever studied Bhakti Shastri? No? Well, this is from the Bhakti Shastri course. It's a course on Bhagavad Gita and it includes also this book, the Sri Ishopanishad. So tonight I thought it would be nice to just give you the introduction which is a very basic lesson which covers some of the important points in the teaching of Krishna consciousness, right? So we talked about the word pramana, meaning proof. You know, people often say, you know, you believe in God, can you prove it? You know, and you're chanting Hare Krishna, can you prove it, that it's good for you? We want proof, you know. People like proof. So, there's different ways in which we can prove things. One way is by what is called pratyaksha, meaning direct sense perception. We sometimes say, seeing is believing. Do you believe everything you see? Huh? <laughs> you're thinking about it, you're not, you're not very sure. Some things you, you may look up at the sun and you see, oh the sun is the size of a coin. But of course it's much bigger than a coin. But our eyes, you know, they're subject to illusion. And so sense perception, senses not very reliable, that's the problem, right? That what we think may be good may not be so good. And something which may be bad may actually be good. So we cannot really depend on our senses for perfect information. Another kind of evidence or proof is what is called anumana or hypothesis. Hypothesis means someone will say, well I think like this, I think, <laughs> right? I think Malaysia is a good country and some say, well I think Malaysia is <laughs> Everyone has different thoughts different opinions. So the mind, hypothesis, thinking about things, it's not very reliable just to go by the mind. And then another kind of evidence is what is called shabda, meaning sound, hearing from authority. Just like we give the example, I want to know who is my father. So, I can go to all the men and ask them, are you my father? Are you my father? So, may never find out who is it. But if we go to the mother, then the mother can immediately say, he's the father. That's your father. She knows, right? So, we. A hearing from authority. You have to hear not just from anyone but someone who is an authority, who is qualified to speak. So that is what is called shabda, hearing. And that is the basic principle behind studying the, the teachings of Shastra or scriptures like Bhagavad Gita. Have you all got a Bhagavad Gita? Yes? Are you reading? Yes? We hope so. Yeah? You should read regularly, every day. Read a little Bhagavad Gita. So these three kinds of 
evidence or proofs are there. Senses not very reliable. Mind also not very reliable. But sound, if we get the sound from the right source, that is more reliable. That is what we base our teachings on, hearing from sound. Now, I think you've all heard of this example before, right? You can see what's happening. The blind men. The blind men are massaging the different parts of the elephant. You see? Some man has got the leg. And he's thinking, what's he thinking the leg is like? Huh? Like a tree, right. And someone's on the tail. He said, no, no, it's like a rope. Like a rope, right. And then someone's at the side. He said, no, no, it's like a wall. Like a wall, yeah, it's like a wall. And then somebody's got the ear. And he's holding the ear. He said, huh, no, it's, it's, it's like a... X, right, yeah. And then someone else has got the tusk of the elephant and he said it's like a like an arrow. And someone else has got this that trunk of the elephant and he said it's like a like a snake. Are they all wrong? Are they all wrong? Or are they all right? Well, they're only describing a part of e each one of them is describing a part of the elephant. But they're not wrong, but they're not giving complete description of the elephant, right? They're only describing part of it. So, it's often like that when people speak about God. They want to understand God and they understand something about God. They say, God is light. You know, there's people like that. I, I was, one day I was distributing books and I met a young man and he said to me, he said, oh, you're a devotee of Krishna, is it? He said, I know Krishna's not God. He has a mother and father. And then he said to me, God is light. God is Shiva. <laughs> and he told me, God is light. So, yes, God is light, but he's much more than just light. There's much more. You have to understand more than just only light. You have to go through the light and find out where the light is coming from. Just like we go outside and there in the daytime we'll be in the light. We go in, in the light. Where is the light coming from? From the sun, right. But where is the sun? Do we see the sun? It may be hidden by the clouds. It may be hidden by the clouds. And on the sun planet, there's a sun god. You see? So you have to go further. Don't just be satisfied with what we see with immediately the first percent. The first thing we see, just like the blind man they're just feeling only one part of the elephant. There's a story about when the trains first came to India. Everyone wanted to see the train. They all wanted to see the train. So they heard a train, there's a train coming there tonight. You should go there, you go to the, you'll see the train. So people went there and what happened was they saw in the distance they saw the smoke coming up because it was a coal. In the, in the beginning the trains were all fired with coal, they would burn the coal and there would be smoke coming out from the top of the train, you know. 
And so people went to see the train and all they could see was the smoke coming out the top. And they thought, oh, that's a train. And they went home. <laughs> Some people went home anyway. They thought, oh, that was a train. They only saw the smoke. And other people, they waited longer and then they heard the train. They heard the whistle of the train. They heard the, 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 you know, the, the running of the train. And they thought, oh, that's a train. And they went home. And other people waited and waited and one, the, finally the train came in to the station and they saw there was an engine and there were carriages behind and there was a driver in the front driving the train and there were passengers on the train and they saw all the details of the train. So they had to be patient to see everything. The same way people want to understand God. You want to understand God. How to understand God? Do you just simply believe God is light? Where does the light come from? Just like light is here. Where is this light coming from? It's coming from? From electricity, right? There's electricity. It's connected. The electricity cable goes all the way back to the power station. And in the power station, there are engineers there and they're arranging for the electricity to be generated. So, you have to understand everything in the proper way. Not just, oh, you put the thing in, the, put the plug in the socket and it all works. It has to be connected to the power station. The same way we want to understand God, we have to be connected. We have to get the connection. And how do we get connected to God? You have to have a teacher. That is the, the spiritual master, the guru. The guru opens the eye so that we can actually see the truth. So it's important for us to learn these basic facts of spiritual knowledge. Just like in understanding God, we explain there are three aspects. There is the Brahman, there is Paramatma, and there is Bhagavan. So Brahman means the light, the all-pervading spiritual energy. And we are also parts of that Brahman. We are all Brahman, we are all living entities and we are, our, our life is coming from the soul. And the soul is Brahman. The soul is not material, it is spiritual. So we are all parts of the Brahman. But God is the Parabrahman. He is the Supreme Brahman. We are tiny parts and He is the Supreme. He is like the fire. We are like the little spark. The sparks can easily be put out. But the big fire keeps burning. So God is Bhagavan. So there is Brahman and then Paramatma. Paramatma means the super soul in the heart. The yogis are all meditating. Any of you do any meditation? Any meditators here? No. What do you do? <laughs> you don't chant? You have to chant. That's meditation, mantra meditation, right? So, the yogis meditate on the super soul, the Lord in the heart. The yogis, you know, they all sit. They sit like yogis, sit straight, right? You sit like a yogi, sit in the Padma Asana, 
and you sit back straight, you don't go to sleep, <laughs> right? You sit, you, if you, the back's not straight, the head goes down, you go to sleep. <laughs> but if you sit up straight, you won't go to sleep, right? So, good yogis, yes? Yeah? See all the yogis here? <laughs> So, the yogis, they're meditating on Paramatma. Paramatma means the Supreme Soul. In the heart, there are two souls. There's a Jivatma and the Paramatma. The Jivatma is the servant and the Paramatma is the master. Example is given, just like two birds in the tree. Two birds in the tree. One bird is eating the fruit and the other bird is watching. So Paramatma is watching us, watching us eat the fruit we try to enjoy. Sometimes the fruit is nice and sometimes it's bitter, right? Sometimes it's pleasing and sometimes it's not. So Paramatma is the witness to all of our actions and knows everything. We forget. We forget, oh I, you know, but Paramatma doesn't forget. We forget all the bad things we did. We forget all the trouble we cause, but Paramatma remembers everything and reminds us, you did that, you deserve this, this is your own fault, you get what you deserve. So like that, two souls, Paramatma, the yogi is meditating and Paramatma is there telling us, don't do that. Oh, but I want, oh, I want, I don't want to do my homework, I want to sleep, I want to eat more. Paramatma said, you already ate twice, you've already eaten three times more than everybody else, but I'm, oh, I want more. Paramatma is there telling us, we don't hear. We have to hear from Param Lord in the heart. And Bhagavan is the Supreme Lord who appears as a person. And he speaks the Bhagavad Gita and he performs wonderful pastimes. So he's living, Bhagavan lives in his own abode in the spiritual world, in Vaikuntha as Lord Vishnu or in Goloka Vrindavan as Lord Krishna. So Bhagavan, like this, three features of God. Some people only know Brahman, some people know Paramatma, but the devotees will know Bhagavan. Now if one knows Bhagavan, you will also know Paramatma and Brahman. Just like if you have a hundred ringgits, you also have fifty ringgits, you also have twenty ringgits. So one who knows Bhagavan, he knows also Paramatma and also Brahman. Right? So then next slide, here you see this is a quotation from the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 4, verse number 2. Evam param para praptam Emam rajashayo vidu Sakali niham mahata Yoga Nashta Parantapa. So this science was received through the chain of disciplic succession, the parampara. 
You can see on the left the illustration on the top Radha and Krishna and then Lord Brahma, right? Remember yesterday we were telling you about the, the different paramparas, yes. right? What parampara are we in? We're in the Brahma Vaishnava, Brahma Madhva Gaudiya Vaishnava, yes. The Brahma Sampradaya, the one coming from Lord Brahma, right? So you see Lord Brahma there below Radha and Krishna. And then who's after Lord Brahma? Narada Muni, right. And who comes after Narada Muni? Who is the disciple of Narada Muni? Do you know any disciples of Narada Muni? Is he your guru? No? You're not so lucky to get Narada Muni for your guru, huh? Narada Muni is a brahmachari. He probably wouldn't take any women as disciples, right? He's a brahmachari. Narada Muni. Who, who, who are his disciples? Huh? Do you know any disciples of Narada Muni? Prahlad. Prahlad, right? Who is called Prahlad? This boy is Prahlad, right? Yes, he is Prahlad. So, Prahlad is a disciple of Narada Muni. Who, Dhruva Maharaj. Dhruva is also a disciple of Narada Muni. Right? Dr Narada Muni came to Dhruva when Dhruva was a young boy, he was going to the forest. And Narada Muni said to him, Oh, you're just a young boy, better you go home. Come back when you're a big boy. You're too young. But Dhruva said, No, I'm not going back. Are you going to help me find God or not? So Narada was very pleased that Dhruva was very determined. He wanted very much. You want to get God, you have to be very serious. You have to be very determined. You want to get Guru, you have to be very serious. You have to be committed. So, Narada Muni, he had disciple Vyasadeva. Remember Vyasadeva? What did Vyasadeva do? What does he do? Huh? Yeah, he writes. He writes. He wrote the Srimad Bhagavatam. He wrote Mahabharata. He wrote Puranas. Right? So Vyas, he, he is a disciple of Narada Muni. And then we, we, we didn't show Vyasadeva's picture there. It's not there, but you can see the present day Acharyas. Bhakti Vinod Thakur and then Gorkishore Das Babaji, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati and our own Bhakti Vedanta Swami. So Parampara, the knowledge is passed down. Just like the mango, delicate fruit. When you get the mango, you pass it carefully. You don't just throw it to the ground, you know. Maybe if you have oranges, they'll just throw them to the ground. Because oranges, they won't go, they don't get bruised so easily. But the mango is delicate. You handle it carefully. So this knowledge also, it has to be handled carefully, passed from the guru to the disciple. And then from the disciple to his disciple. In this way, the knowledge is passed down from one to the other. All right, so I'm going to speak now about the four defects. Four defects. Do you have any defects? Yes? We say nobody's perfect, right? Everybody makes mistakes. To err is human. 
to forgive divine. So you may make mistakes, but you may not be forgiven. You might be. You might be lucky. Defects. I mean, we, we do things wrong. So the first one, commit mistakes. We make mistakes. Did you ever make a mistake? Many, right? Make a lot of mistakes. Oh, I did it wrong. Oh, my. So many mistakes we can make. Commit mistakes. When we make a mistake. We think, oh, I thought it was, I thought the program was at seven o'clock and I came at eight o'clock. Oh. oh, I thought the prasadam was first. I have to sit in the class, so we make mistakes. So make mistakes. And then second fault, illusion. What is the number one illusion? What's the big illusion? Have you, are you in an illusion? Often, right? Often in illusion. What is your illusion? You're thinking? Huh? <laughs> I'm a great devotee. Yes, that's one illusion. We're thinking, I'm a good devotee, I'm a great devotee. Right? We're thinking, I'm very intelligent. We're thinking, I'm very beautiful. We're thinking, I'm very famous. We're thinking, I'm very great. We're thinking, I am the body. That is illusion, to think I am the body. The big illusion, everyone's in that illusion. We're thinking, I am the body. But we're not the body, are you? We're all spirit souls living in the body. But the illusion is to think I am the body. So we have to get out of that illusion. That is also a mistake, the illusion. And then, cheating propensity. We cheat. And sometimes when we're not cheating, we get cheated. <coughs> Prabhupada said, there's only two people in the world, the cheaters and the cheated. So sometimes we're cheating and sometimes we're being cheated, right? The, the cheating business goes on. It's often there, you know, you, you get different politicians sometimes, they will say, you, if you vote for me, if you give the vote to me, I promise you, I'll give you a good life, I'll make your life very nice, you have a lot of money, you'll live very comfortably, everything will be very... Just vote for me, give me your vote. And we vote for the person and then afterwards then we don't get what he promised. Often like that. And Sometimes cheating goes on, the, the, the teacher will ask you, do you understand? And, oh, oh yeah, 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 I understand. And what, what I was talking about? Uh, uh, uh. Well, I don't remember now. So that cheating is there, right? And sometimes when it comes to prasadam, you know, there's not much prasadam and they serve out a little bit to everybody and they say, did you get enough? Oh yeah, 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 you yeah, understand? Oh. <laughs> so hungry. So we, we cheat, we often cheat. So these things are common, you know, when you go shopping, you have to check, make sure you didn't, did you get the right change? <laughs> you have to check on everything. 
you're buying, maybe you buy a second hand car, he tells you the car is very good, <laughs> and then when you drive it, it falls apart. Yeah. <laughs> So we get cheated. And then the fourth thing, imperfect senses. Imperfect senses. We say, oh look, a snake. And you think, a snake? Really? There's a snake? No, it's only a rope. Oh, oh I thought it was a snake. Oh no, it's a snake. Kill it. No, no, it's only a rope. So the snake in the rope, imperfect senses. We'll, we will show some examples of imperfect senses. Anyway, here's the, the Sanskrit words, Brahma, meaning commit mistakes, Pramada, illusion, Vipralipsa, cheating, and Karanapatava. These are the Sanskrit words. Okay, here's an interesting picture. Maybe you've seen this before, I don't know. Is it a young lady or is it an old lady? Is it an, who said it's a young lady? And who said it's an old lady? You're both right. You're both right, yeah. It's, a, it's an old, can you see the old lady? You see the old lady there? I, I don't know if you can see. Can you see, let's see, the old lady, you, you see, that, that's her chin down the bottom there, that's her mouth. You see it now? And the young lady, of course, it's more obvious. Yeah. So some people see the young lady, and other people see the old lady. They're both there in the picture. It's how we see it, right? So like that, our senses can be often illusion, an illusion. It's not easy. Our eyes, you know, we have eyes, but doesn't mean we can see everything perfectly. Here's another one. You can see there's a, there are lines going through and the lines look like they're bent, but actually they're straight. They're straight lines, but they don't look straight because they're going through all these circles. It looks like they're bent. So this is the illusion of the eyes. The lines, because they're coming through all these circles, they look like they're bent. And here's another one. You can see. Now the lines coming across are all parallel, but they don't look it. They look. <laughs> So our, our eyes, just like when we look in water, we look in water, the water doesn't look as deep as it actually is. Because the eyes are, the, the vision is reflected through the water. So the water will look shallow, but it's actually deep. So the same way, we look here and we think, oh these lines are going that way, but they're going this way. But actually, they're all they're going the same way. They're all parallel. And you can see that these things look like they're rotating. They look like they're moving, but they're not moving. They're all stationary. So we, th we see things in different ways. <laughs> Make mistakes, right? This is making mistakes. The one man's going up the other stairs, you know? 
where is he going? Maybe climbing to heaven, I don't... So, we can make mistakes. Okay, in, in conclusion, Prabhupada says, with all these deficiencies, we cannot give perfect knowledge to anyone, nor are we ourselves perfect. Therefore, we accept the Vedas as they are. So this is the conclusion. We want perfect knowledge. Where do we get perfect knowledge? We don't get it from our own mind or from our own senses because we are not perfect. But we get perfect knowledge from the Vedas, from the scriptures. If we hear from the scriptures, that is perfect. The Vedas are like the mother, just like I gave the example. We want to know who is our father. So there are two, one way you can go to all the men, are you my father, are you my father, are you my father? How to find out the father? You may never find your father, so many men. But you go to the mother, the mother can immediately say, who is the father? So the same way, we want knowledge about God. We want to know who is God. We should go to the mother. And who is the mother? The Vedas are like the mother. They tell us everything about the father. Veda means knowledge. Knowledge means to know who I am, why I am here, where I am going, these kind of things. Sometimes we ask people, who are you? You are, who are you? You are, you are me. No, you're not me. Who are you? Huh? What did you say? Darshan. Darshan? No, no, no. Darshan is here, right? We get the darshan there. Darshan means to go to see God, right? Who are you? We want, we ask, who are you? Huh? Soul. Very good, yes. Oh, a good student, huh? He's learned. We are souls, right? We're not the body, right? We're all souls. That is the first thing to understand. Who am I? I am a soul. People would come to Prabhupada and they would ask him, Swamiji, how old are you? And Prabhupada would say, I am the same age as you. Right? I am the same age as you, I'm the same age as you. You know that? Believe that? You don't believe? Why not? You don't know. No. I'm the same age as you. You are the same age as me. Why? Because we are all souls, right? You are a soul. You say, my hand, my arm, my head, my leg, who am I? I am the the soul, yes, I am the soul. And how old is the soul? No age, right? Eternal. For the soul, there's no birth and there's no death, right? Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, there's no birth and there's no death. The soul is eternal. 
We're all eternal souls. And who is God? Lord Krishna. Swayam Bhagavan Sri Krishna. Sri Krishna Bhagavan Ki. Who is the master? Krishna, right? And we are servants, right? That's very good. If you know all that knowledge, your knowledge is already perfect. That God is the master and we are his servants. And we are all souls living in material bodies. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Any question? Anybody? Any problem? I hope not. I hope you have no problems. Okay. Thank you. Hare Krishna.